Hello and welcome. I'm Jason Summer, AI Solution Innovation Architect at Snowflake. I am thrilled today to introduce a brand new application called Evalanche from the Snowflake Solution Innovation Team. Evalanche is a Streamlit and Snowflake application that provides a single location to evaluate and compare Gen AI use case outputs in a streamlined, on demand, and automated fashion. Regardless if your goal is to measure the quality of something like a RAG solution or accuracy of SQL generation, if you're using Cortex Analyst, Evalanche provides a scalable, customizable, and trackable way to do so. If you've started to experiment with LLM use cases for your business, then you probably know how tedious and time consuming it can be to quantify the various qualities of your many experiments. My hope is that Evalanche can remove this part of the equation to allow you to focus on improving your LLM responses. In this quick video, I'll walk you through how to set up Evalanche and start orchestrating your LLM evaluations. Here we're at the Evalanche repo. To deploy this into your Snowflake account, go to Setup. And the easiest way will be with this script, the git setup file. And if you just copy this entire file and drop it into a SQL worksheet, highlight the entire thing and hit run, and this will deploy Evalanche into your Snowflake account. Once you do that, Navigate to Streamlit, and you'll see the application right here. So let's go ahead and load the application. And here we're on the homepage of Evalanche. This will be sort of your dashboard for your evaluations. In a nutshell, evaluations comprise two aspects, uh, metrics and data sources. Here we will craft the metric. And so what is a metric? Let's look at an example. We can look at correctness. Correctness will evaluate the correctness of a response compared to a reference answer on a scale of one to five, where five indicates the score strongly agrees that the response is correct compared to the expected response. Correctness here has three required inputs. The question, the expected answer, and the LLM generated response. Correctness is one of a handful of metrics in this section, which will show metrics where you have a expected response or the ideal response. That may not be the case. You might have something where you just have a question and a response, and you wanna see the relevancy of that response to that question, in which case you have answer relevancy. Lastly, this top section, there is a delivered metric for Cortex Analyst. Cortex Analyst writes SQL queries, and so we will compare the results retrieved from a generated SQL response compared to a ground truth SQL statement and assess if they uh, match. You can also add your own metric. So if we go to add metric, we have a templated version here. So let's call it my relevancy. And this will evaluate similar to answer relevancy where five indicates the score strongly agrees that the response is relevant to the question. You can pick your defaulted Cortex LLM, and then we will craft a response. Now this gives you some intuition of all of the metrics here. They use what are called LLM as a judge mechanism where we ask one large language model to assess the response of another. And here we're crafting the response that the scoring LLM should uh, follow. 
any variable encapsulated by the curly brackets, those will be filled out by a value from your data source, which we will select next. And then you can give a description for each variable. So the question here would be a user question. And the AI response will be the LLM generated response. And let's create this custom metric. And there is my custom metric. Now let's actually start the process of crafting an evaluation. And as I mentioned, this is two pieces. This is metrics and data sources. So let's say we have some data and these are LLM generated outputs that we want to assess. And we're curious to make sure that the generated responses match an expected answer. And we wanna assess the relevancy. So in that scenario, we may not have a ideal response, but we wanna make sure the responses we're getting from the LLM are relevant given the question. So let's click continue. And now we're at the second piece, which is the data source selection. You can do this in a couple of ways. The goal here is that we craft a table or a data set that will allow me to input the required inputs for each of my metrics. So if that's one table, already has these curated inputs, perfect. Maybe it's in a couple of places and you have to write custom SQL. That's fine as well. Or lastly, maybe you're doing a ton of experiments and you have your reference questions in one place and many experiments of outputs in a different place in which case you can specify your expected results data source and your actual results, and then give us a join key so that we can combine these in the final data set. So let's go ahead and unclick this and let me select a sample data set here. So I have a table called sample responses and let me click the columns I want. And I want all these columns. Let me quickly show you what this data set looks like. So we'll preview. The data set is a series of questions asked about typical software engineering practices or technologies. For every question, we have an ideal response. Think of these as the textbook answer to the question. And then we have generated responses. These are generated by an LLM who has received the question and instructions to provide an answer. And these answers are decent, some are good, some are not great, um, which will be a good measure of our metrics. So let me click configure. And this will be the last step. In this dialogue, we will actually go through and associate a metrics required inputs to the column in the data source I've just selected or crafted. And if you wanna change the LLM used to score these results, you can do that as well. So the question from our relevancy, it's just the user question in my data set and the AI response is my generated response. Lastly, let's look at correctness. This has three required inputs. User question is my first one. The expected response will go here. And lastly, the generated response. We are all set to click run. This can take anywhere from 20 seconds to a couple of minutes, depending on how big the data set is. It will multi-thread it. So it will use as many threads as the Streamlit application has available, and that can fluctuate. Okay, and here we have our results.
right off the bat, you have some average KPIs. A uh, reminder, each one of these metrics uses a Likert scale, which is a one to five scale. I've crafted them so that fives across the board are perfect and ones are certainly less than ideal. Uh, you'll notice these LLMs tend to be pretty strict. If the ideal response is a couple sentences, a five is almost a perfect regurgitation of those expected responses. So threes are pretty good. Twos, I would say, are, are average or fine. Uh, ones are certainly troublesome. Here we have a, a table of our results. And on the far right, we have these scores. So we have a handful of fours, some twos, certainly have a one in there. It's a good test. And the bottom here, we have some quick charts. So we can do a couple of things here. First, we can select some records to review closer. And we pointed out that one with a score of one right here. So let's get a better understanding of what happened there. So if we click this and we click review record, we can dive a little bit deeper. So it'll default to their first metric. The one was for the correctness metric. So that's a little more interesting. Here's the question. How do you ensure database transactions maintain ACID properties? Expected response touches on what the acronym stands for, and more importantly, prevents data corruption and loss. Our response, says that ACID properties help ensure the database runs faster by breaking down into larger transactions into smaller parts. I can certainly see the issue with that. Let's get a second opinion. We've asked yet another LLM to review this entire record and give us another understanding of why the one uh, was given here. And it says the reason it did not accurately capture the fundamental purpose of ACID properties, which is to ensure the integrity and consistency of transactions. To improve the input, the AI assistant could be asked to provide a more detailed and accurate explanation, such as their role in maintaining data consistency and preventing data corruption. So as sort of an area to learn, let's see what would happen if we adjusted this generate response a little bit and said, more importantly, acid properties help to maintain data consistency and prevent data corruption. And let's rerun. And there we have a three, perfect. So let's just comment here that this has been adjusted and let's save already. And here we have our new record results there. Now, a couple more options here. I can record the results to a table. This would be great for any ad hoc analysis uh, of your results later on, especially if you're adjusting your records or adding comments for further analysis. I can also save and or automate the evaluation. So let's start with save evaluation. Here, I will give a name to the evaluation. This will essentially create a store procedure or a mechanism where I can kick off this entire evaluation with a click of a button from the homepage it will be recorded as an on-demand evaluation. So let's call it my on-demand eval. And let's call, let's give a description of check my sample responses table for relevancy and correctness. Let's click save. This is going to save the data source configuration and the metric configuration or selection so that that's all set and ready to go anytime I kick off this evaluation. 
All right, and lastly on this page, we can automate the evaluation. What this will do is monitor the data source we've selected or crafted so that any new record that arises in that data source will be measured for the metrics we've selected and the results written to a table for me to monitor on an ongoing fashion. The warehouse here will power the automation aspect, essentially monitoring the data source using a stream so that any new record we're measuring. Let's call this my auto eval. And let's say this is automatically checking for relevancy and correctness. And let's click save. And now, once we go back to the home page, we can see our saved evaluation and our automated evaluation. Either one of these can be viewed, so let's go ahead and click Saved Evaluations. We can see the source SQL that's been created for this evaluation and some metadata of the configurations for the two metrics. We can certainly delete this, but let's go ahead and click run. And this will kick off this evaluation for us. And here we have our results. And there you have it. You've successfully deployed the Evalanche application and crafted your very own LLM evaluation. While this Streamlit application is a great starter for LLM evaluations, Snowflake continues to make massive strides in native large language model observability and evaluation features within the Cortex AI ecosystem. Stay tuned for updates and happy evaluating. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe for more Snowflake developer content. Thanks.